right, so here we are. I'm hoping that as you are watching this, you have already chosen your space in your house and whatever you're going to use as an altar. And so what I have in front of me, uh, I'm going to go through and explain each piece on this altar and why I chose it. Because it's not what you put on it, it's why you chose it, why it is sacred to you um, in your life, and why it means so much to you that you would want to put it on your altar. And so first off, um, because we're going to be using this space for the rest of Lent and all of Holy Week, if you can go through your house and find something that is purple, something is red, something that is black, and something that is white. And so I went through and um, I have a couple scarves that cover the red and the, the purple. Or you can go through and I also found some t-shirts that are red, purple, and black. And I also have a bed sheet that will serve as white. And so you could use scarves, you can use t-shirts, you can use tablecloths, you can use placemats, you can use ribbons, hair bows, anything you've got in your house. Because as you know, color is important as the Episcopal Church and the Roman Catholic Church, as we mark time, we mark sacred time through the use of color. And so this will help us, even though we're not going to be doing a whole lot moving in space, it will help us move through Holy Week um, by using different colors. And so let's take, let's take my Swanee t-shirt um, and I'm going to fold it so that I'm not praising Swanee and I'm just going to lay it across the corner for right now. And so that's going to serve as our liturgical color to mark our time um, through the next couple of weeks. The next thing I have is I have a Bible. Um, this Bible is the Bible that was given to me when I was ordained a transitional deacon and as a priest. And so this Bible holds special meaning to me. You can have a Bible that's been handed down through um, the ages. I have one downstairs that's been in the family for a long time. You can have one that you just download off the internet and just put the front cover of it and put it on your table just so that something marks the sacred word is what we're looking for, okay? And then the next things that I have chosen for mine are just sayings that um, bring me comfort and sayings that help me reflect uh, and give me something to stir on. And so for this one, it is well with my soul, and that was given to me as a gift from Saint, somebody at St. John's. And this one was given to me just recently um, by somebody at St. Bartholomew's. And so it says, God wastes nothing. And as you know, that's my own personal mantra. And of course, there's a flamingo on the back, but we're going to keep that this way for right now. What's in the center uh, for me is this cross, this crucifix. And this crucifix um, was given to me after my grandmother died. In the Roman Catholic tradition, when a Roman Catholic died, this is way back in the 70s, I'm aging myself, uh, a person would get this cross from the church and it would be put in the casket while they went through the viewing. And then once the casket was closed, either the cross stayed with the body or the cross came out and was handed down to someone in the family. And so for me, this cross was in my grandmother's casket and it comes apart. And many of you have heard me talk about this cross in different Bible studies, but it comes apart and then this are the um, instruments and the accoutrements that would be used for a uh, death visual or for the last rites. And so this cross has stayed with me for a long, long time. It usually hangs over my bed, um, but in this house, I have decided to put it on my altar. And so that's what's in the center. And then this over here is a bowl and it's full of water. And the bowl was given to me by a dear friend in Charlotte and the water is going to remind me of my baptismal covenant. Uh, water is a sign of life. It is a sign of our life in Christ. It's a sign of what connects all of us through our baptismal covenant. And so all I have done is just simply fill it with water and keep it there. And then as another visual, I have some seashells. I love the coast. <laughs> I love the water. I love the beach. Uh, and I'm not going to get to one anytime soon. So. I have brought these because they give me comfort and they remind me of my time in Na Naples and the times I've spent with my daughters going 
and finding seashells, we actually found these uh, on a family vacation with them and my grandson. And so that's there. It would be great if you could find a candle. We'll light this later on, but to remind yourselves of the light of Christ, and we will light the candle as we worship together. And so this is just a standard candle. Um, it does not have to be white. So any color candle will do anything that's light. If you don't have a candle, you have a flashlight, then we'll go ahead and use that, and we'll just turn the flashlight on as we pray together. And so I'm now going to leave you to go on your scavenger hunt in your home, find those things that are sacred, and put it on your altar. And if you so wish, um, take a picture of what you've created in your home and go ahead and send it to me at rector at sacbart.org and we'll create a collage of the altars that we have built in our own homes. So I will leave you for right now. I will see you on Sunday morning as we gather at 10 o'clock for morning prayer. It will also be live streamed and the PDF will be on the website St. Bart S-A-I-N-T-B-A-R-T dot org. May God bless, may God keep you.